Very good. Okay. Here's what I would like to do. Here's, here's my plan. I would like to give some general big picture things, some ideas uh, of some basic things. But Canvas, like several of other tools, comes. it's a great tool, but if I count there's 20 of you in here, you're going to use it 20 different ways. And I'd rather not talk to one person and the other 19 of you sit there symbolically, historically twiddling your thumbs or say, I'm going to throw something at that Austell guy or whatever. Uh, so we're going to try to, to look at, uh, again, my little spiel I did this morning. I don't know how many were in there hiding in the balcony or whatever, but let's look and say, what is it you need to do? And then talk about what is the best tool to help you do that? Uh, that's going to be the unit of measure. Let me take a moment and talk to my beloved. I brought my mouse, thank you. Let me get where I can sh do show and tell. Oh, no, 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 no. I almost went next door. She would not like me to mess up her presentation. <laughs> this is room 109 and the secret 6226. All right, if you will open your computer or if you're welcome to do that, uh, the link is off of my Lipscomb, but we were looking here a minute ago and he could not get to my Lipscomb, so you, there's a link off of my Lipscomb, or you can go directly by using Lipscomb.instructure, that's I-N followed by the word structure like a building, Lipscomb.instructure, instructure.com, dot com. And it will ask for your Lipscomb username and Lipscomb password. And hopefully the toughest challenge you have is logging on and everything else is downhill. Anybody having issues? We good. Hey, you just passed your first test. So we give you a 99.9. .9. Nobody's perfect, so you get 99.9. .9. All right. Here's, here's the way I'm going to approach it. About, oh, it's been five or six years ago, we surveyed the students. This is undergraduate students, not the, not the pharmacy people. We surveyed the undergraduate students and said, what would you want from your instructor using Blackboard, which we had back then, or Canvas today? They said, number one, we'd like to be able to get to the resources that the instructor wants us to deal with anytime. And I joke with people that some of my students do their best work between midnight and 2 a.m. So putting material out there is the first thing I want to walk you through. Is in, here is material. Now when I say material, it could be a file. Now the word file in our conversation could be a PowerPoint presentation a PDF, a Word document, any of the basic Excel file, anything like that. Please be aware, and I'm looking around, I was trying to see if there's anybody out of an environment that has very specialized, like art would deal with some like Photoshop, something of that type. You have to be aware, Canvas loves to handle any kind of a file. But if you have some very specialized file and you go to deliver it, the student's computer may not be able to handle it. So that's the thing you be aware of. There is an option in Canvas, I'll show you in a few minutes, that says when somebody as a student submits something to Canvas, I will only accept it this way. Meaning, I have some students that speak Word, they speak the Windows flavor of Word, Excel, and all that, and they also speak the Apple versions. All right, I don't like to have to grade two flavors. All right, I say, okay, you're on a Mac, do Word on a Mac. You're in Windows, 
do Word on Windows. If you make me happy, I make you happy, so to speak. I don't want to get in a position of where I get a PowerPoint presentation delivered to me by a student, and then here's a keynote option. I have, I have nothing against keynote, fine product, but I just don't want to have to say I'm going to be Baskin Robbins. I want to do it and make it as easy for them and as easy for me. All of our students get Microsoft Office free. What do you not understand about free? You know, that's, that's what I say to you. But the survey says, okay, what did you want? Number one, I want to be able to get to my resources, whatever they are, anytime I want to. Number two, what are my grades? Now, granted, you've been face-to-face -face generally as I look around. I could walk up and say, Tammy, what kind of grade have I got right now? Could you show me my grades? And that's nose-to-nose. -nose. We no longer have that option for obvious reasons. So we want to look at putting out a grade book where you can enter the grades and a student can look at the grades and that that's, solves that one. The other thing is this, which in a way it doesn't apply in the same context. Back before this craziness started, we had faculty that got all fired up over Canvas. Oh, it's the greatest thing that they've ever been. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and they only had 24 hours a day to do it. So the students said, we don't want an instructor to say to us, hey, I'm going to have this for you, I'm going to have that for you, and it never appear. So don't make promises of things that you're going to do, and because time and whatever other factors come into play, that comes back to haunt you. Those are the three things. Uh, and I think they're all very legitimate as we deal with students, whether it's face to face. All right, let me give you a philosophical observation. Canvas has a lot of capabilities. I know of no instructor that uses every capability. And if they did, I would consider them strange. You use what you need to use and don't go playing in the other areas. As I said this morning, the tools do not drive the content. The content drives the tools. And, and that's what I would say to you. Here's, here's your situation. Let's just start within Canvas right now. My, because of my involvement, I have all kinds of toys up here, uh, various activities. You can even come in and have a picture put associated with your class. Each of these what they call cards represents a course. You should have in your Canvas environment all of the courses that you currently are teaching. Now if you've never been to Canvas before, obviously they're nice and empty. They're clean. We're getting ready to make them a little bit dirty. It also has all the preceding courses. On the extreme left edge, is a set of menus or choices from a menu that are canvas wide. The second area which we'll look at in a minute is for a course. As in as I look at the list, account, here's where you log off. So if I click account, here's where you log off. I would ask you please log off. If you're on my lips come through that, you go that route, it automatically logs you off. While I'm telling you this, I'd also ask you, don't leave your computer on forever. Shut your computer down at least once a week. It needs to clean up after itself and things like that. I'll have faculty come in and they'll start talking about something on Canvas and I say, that doesn't make sense, let's restart it, and it takes care of itself. Here's where you log out. I'm all for the good housekeeping seal of approval to log out. Several quick points. And again, I'm going to hit a lot of spots. I want you to appreciate what it can do. I'm not going to ask you to replicate it here. Uh, I don't want you to do anything other than have a great spring break, but we'll be willing to help you in a heartbeat when you come back in some very focused things. Canvas has what are called notifications. Most of those don't mean anything to you. 
If you would like to, you could have Canvas email you every time a student submits a document to you. No. I don't want that, especially if I have 50 or 60 students. I get enough email. But Canvas provides all these options of real-time communications. So the idea of notifications is I can go in and choose an option that says notify me right now, notify me this afternoon, or notify me at the end of the week what's happened. So that's what notifications. There was a question, I think it was in the second group this morning, about issues with student communicating uh, from, can from Canvas. Profile, files, and settings are things we're going to ignore right now. I'm sure some of you would love to put your picture out there and put your biography out there and all of your credits, the honors you've earned over the years. Fine, I'll be glad to point you in the right direction to do that, but that's not part of the scope here. This is pretty much default. This is all pulled off of Banner for right now. So my official name in Banner is that right there. You know, so we are officially in central time zone. Those things are set up. Now, because of my work, what I do, I have added a phone number. So there are certain situations, especially when I demonstrate in another context, how I can get a message on my phone relating to some things that happen in Canvas. Again, beyond the scope of our conversation. If you didn't hear what I said, good, ignore it. You don't get to be an administrator, so we're not going to talk about the administrative tab. If you click on Dashboard, please, if you'll make sure you've clicked on Dashboard, you should see the courses that are currently assigned to you. Generally, that's what there, what's there. Is anybody... Normally, I'd walk and talk, but I'm trying to help relating to this crazy camera uh, situation. If you will now click courses which is right below that at the bottom of that list click all courses if you scroll down you will see something that says past enrollments now granted you haven't used canvas so there's nothing in these what we call course shells but we have all of the past courses Here's one thought to you. This work that you're going to do, I'm going to assume you're going to teach this same class in the foreseeable future. Anything that you put in Canvas right now can be moved over to any future section of that course. It is front-end loaded. Let's all understand, Canvas is front-end loaded. You've got to put it in the first time. Tim's teaching a Civil War course. The Battle of Gettysburg is not going to change between now and next November. That, I hope not. So anything he puts out there relating to a Civil War situation or a World War I situation, whatever it might be, if he sees it's appropriate to use it, he can copy it right over in mass as a situation. For example, I teach a class again in project management. I copied everything from my Spring 18 course directly into my Spring 19 course. I had to change some dates. Maybe a little bit of tweaking here and there, which is ongoing. But that's one of the ways that it makes me e make it much easier in that situation. Any of the courses that you want on what's called the dashboard, you click the star, and it will put a color there, and it will then put those up there. Now, I'm not interested in my 18 and 19s and all that kind of good stuff. So here is an example of the courses that are on my dashboard. You see the, the red stars. So anything that I want to be up there, I click the star. If I don't want it up there, I unclick the star from that perspective. You're allowed 37 questions each today, and you're open to ask them anytime you wish to ask them. I, I, I need once in a while to take a deep breath from this perspective. Okay, sandbox, which sandbox did I set up for this class? You have a course in that shopping list, by the way, called Sandbox. 
that's one that you can go in and play in and do all kinds of stuff. So if you want to click on a course that's your real course off the dashboard or off this list, or you want to play in the sandbox, that's up to you. We can always clean up and undo anything that you do. And I apologize, I have too many projects going and bear with me. Perfect. If you click on a course, yours should look like this. Anybody got one that's not? Okay. Let's look at this list of items here. This is your menu for the specific course. For example, if you wanted to go in and deal with a grade book, you're going to click on grades. If you want to look at your class role, click on people. That will show you the people that are part of your class. If you wanted to make an announcement to the whole class in Canvas, that's the tool. You want to create an assignment? That's what we're going to play with in just a few minutes. Many of these things serve no purpose for most people. I'm not sure as I look around I see anybody in here that works in the that would create a course that involves uh, outcomes. So there are different things here that are available to you to use in things that you have no use for. The secret code this means students cannot see that. Okay, This is the default for the course I have. Any of the ones that have the circle with the slash through it means the students can't see that option. Right now, they see the ability to go to discussions, grades, and people. You can edit this to make what's available. Here's the gotcha. You never want files to be available. Because every file that you upload to Canvas, if they can click on files, they can see all of them, including tests, all kinds of materials. So that one should never be there. I know of one faculty member on this campus in the College of Business that does have it there because he has a unique situation. So you don't want there. All right, now how do I fix this? I scroll down. The very last option is settings. And in the middle, off of settings, is the word navigation at the top. It's a tab at the top. I click navigation. It now shows me my shopping list. For example, I want to get rid of files. The three dots across the entire Canvas world means bring up a menu. Canvas worked very hard in their development. I, as a person involved in computers, I have great appreciation for 99% of the way they've designed it. They've tried to make it efficient, consistent, very simple and straightforward once you get the flow. If I want to get rid of files, I click Disable. That now took it off the shopping list for students to see. I can do the same thing for any and all of the others. If you have no, no use for Flipgrid, and I won't give an award to anybody that knows what it is, uh, if you have no use for Flipgrid, you can hide it. I would encourage you to not have items on that list that you don't use. You don't want students to see things that they have no use for. The only gotcha on this, in this area, is that you have to scroll to the bottom and click Save. You have to scroll to the bottom and click Save. That's how you can clean this up. That's how you clean that up. As I look around, I have confidence that all of you have experienced using what we call folders. Go to the beloved filing cabinet, open the second drawer down, look back through the folders, and here's a folder labeled X. That same concept is used in Canvas, but they call it a module. 
So the word module and the word folder are equivalent. How you now design your class is the challenge for you. Are you a person that organizes the class by weeks? Here's week one, here's week two, here's week three. Or do you organize it by topic? If I was Alan Bradshaw, I would have uh, something on light, another topic on sound, another topic on X and Y and all that kind of good stuff. How do you structure? How do you structure the content that you put out there? I have some other faculty that say, here are all the PowerPoints that I have shown in class. That's one module folder. They have another folder or module that they say assignments. I can take both sides and say one group says, I want everything to be done for week one in a folder called week one. Another person says, no, I want all the PowerPoints in one folder called PowerPoints. I don't care. The people that do care are your students. So if you send instructions to your students to say, I want you to complete this assignment, if it's not in an obvious place, if it's not in an obvious place, you need to make it obvious to them by telling them or whatever. That's, the, as I joked in one of the, the presentations this morning, the most help desk tickets that come in to us about Canvas are questions that you have to answer. Where is chapter one assignment? How much is test two? Or when is test three due? Those are the kind of questions far and away that we get. We don't have a clue. So communicating to your students, if you are still in the face-to-face -face world, I would use this analogy. Speak the same language on Canvas that you speak on the classroom floor. Don't, don't speak two different languages. Don't say, here's a sign, I want you to do assignment one by next Monday. And on Canvas you put project one. Please be consistent. I'll say it that way. All right. If you'll click home, let's go back up to home. Let's get serious, so to speak. This is the pattern all the way through Canvas. If I want to create something, it's off of a plus. If you please click plus module. Now this is, one, again, one of your toughest challenges in this class or activity. Would you please name this module or folder to be something? Brick, dog, cat, tree, week one, Santa Claus, whatever. So you put a name in it. and add it. I have now created a place, a folder, to hold some things. And things is very generic. Let's say, for example, that I wanted my students to have access to a certain document. I need to get it off of my computer into this folder. It has to come off of my computer into the folder. So I come over to the plus, and this comes up. All of you are experts at multiple choice questions. I am now giving you a multiple choice question. I click right here, and there are all the things that I can stick in that folder. The bottom three are not part of our conversation today. That's for Canvas 105, not 101, so to speak. We're not playing assignment. We're not playing quiz. We're going to put a file up there. So please click File. Now, the world of the Mac and the, and the Windows look a little bit different, but not about. I want to put a new file up on Canvas. If I had already loaded it, if I'd already used it somewhere else, it would be listed right here, but this is nice and clean. So if you'll click New File, would you browse and go find some file that's stuck on your computer? We're going to delete this in a minute, so we won't ask if it makes sense or not. But go find something off of your computer. I'm going to go Browse. 
I'm going to go to desktop and I'm going to pick, uh, how about book one? I have no idea what I just picked. Open. You notice that the name appears here. If you mess up, you can just go browse again and then click add item. Here's the big, there, we have several gotchas. Canvas believes that you control access to resources. You are in charge. I'm going to use the term green is good, meaning if you look over to the right, there's a green check mark, which means I'm now letting my students see that content. If you look right above it, it's not green. The students cannot see that file. Why? The module is not open. I have not made the, the module available or open. So again, green is good. I want to have all green. It's like going through traffic lights. I want a green one. Now, this is available to students. If you will please click home again for me. Question. Hold that just a moment. Hold that. The, the great question. You demand on that one. That's my super gotcha is what that one is. That's my super gotcha. There is a course limit. There is a course limit. There are ways to get around that. Uh, you can put, uh, you can put if, if, if there are super heavy duty giant gorillas type PowerPoints, uh, you could, for example, drop them on the Google Drive and point to them from Canvas. Canvas and Google love each other. Uh, there are various other choices that you can use, but the size of, the, of an actual course uh, it only has affected probably a half a dozen people since we've been doing Canvas. Alex. Oh, that's right. You're one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Question. Yeah, I, I think I missed the step. I saw where you... Yeah. Uh, go back to home. Scroll up and click on home. This is the greatest tool to give you a warm fuzzy, so to speak, knowing that everything is working. If you click on student view, you are a student in every sense of the word. You can do no more, no less than any of the best or worst students in your class. All right, please click that. This is the student view. You see all the things that they can click on over here. You see this option here. And if this screen had been blank, what did you not do? You didn't go green. You didn't go green. You will have a student contact you and say, I can't find X. They, that might be, as I call it, operator headspace for that student. If you have two students that tell you, I can't get to it, that's a signal that something's not available. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, to give you an example, you can say, I don't want this content to be available until April the 1st. So you can go in and fix it, and if a student clicked on it today, they don't see it. But come April 1st, there it is. I mean, I have faculty members who at the beginning of the term, after several years, they put their whole course out there. And they may say, if you want to do the April work, go to it, and you're in the month of January. Other faculty will say, I don't want you playing with April's work. We're still in January. So different people choose different things. So it provides the capability to say, we use the term selective release. I can release content whenever I need. But this is the most important thing in this context relating to the students to see 
And if you'll click at the bottom right corner to get out of student view, Now, Mark raised the question, and we'll, we'll, we'll deal with the gorilla. I now have put content out there for my students. The folder is available, but Canvas says, when do you want to make the course available? This option right here means that the students can't get in the front door right now. You've got, the, you've got this sample one folder in there, but they can't get through the front door to get to it. You click publish the course and it opens the front door and they can come in. You can never unpublish a course. You can unpublish any content you want. If I said, wait a minute, I've messed up, I can click one click and they can't get to that, that folder or that module. Here's how I put content out there. This is how I put content out there. As in, I want to create another module. It puts it right here. And, and, so, and you can drag and drop and reorder the modules any way you want to. You don't have to build them in a specific order. I could go week four, week seven, week two, week five, and somebody look at me and say, you're dumb, you clown. What are you doing it that way for? But you can make the modules any way you want to, and then you can reorder them for that. That will allow you to put PowerPoints, PDF, Word documents, any of those type content that I'm handing to them. Question on hanging content. Let's now create an assignment. When I've taught this before, because we still were in the land of face-to-face, -face, I could say, you could hand them a set of instructions and they could submit their assignment electronically or you could give them the assignment electronically and they could hand you a piece of paper in class to be graded. Now we're in the world of electronic in and electronic out. Now granted, you could send them an email and say, here's your assignment, submit it back in email. That's okay, more power to you. But you also can do it in Canvas. So if you will click over to the left on which tool would you suggest? I hope assignments. I throw in some easy questions also. Same pattern. New assignment plus assignment. And assign, give it a name please. I'm going to take the infamous assignment number one. This big box right here, it's where you can put instructions. For example, the instructions there could say, see the syllabus for assignments number one. You, some people put everything possible on their syllabus. I have seen 22 page syllabi. I don't know who has the record, but I've seen the one that was 22 pages. Okay, that's fine. I don't care, politely. Here's where I put the instructions. I could say, complete for me a 500-word response to why X occurred. As in, whatever is appropriate for your assignments. Complete on an Excel spreadsheet a demonstration of using these values, whatever it might be. What you're trying to put here is a way to tell the students, here's what I want you to do. It could either be written right there or pointed to at another location. If we'd been face to face, I could have said, here's your assignment and hand it to them a piece of paper. So this has instructions. Okay, if you'll scroll down. Please assign how many points it's worth. It doesn't care if it's 4, 26, or 97. I'm guessing many of you put 100 in there. We're going to jump over some things, but I can put them in an organized way. I'm going to display the graders of points. There are times that I give activities 
that I don't want it to count toward the final grade. Canvas in its grade book will do all the calculations for you. I have yet to see any faculty member come in with a grading plan that we couldn't implement in Canvas. And we've got some weird grading plans on this campus. I will be straightforward with you. 13 tests, drop the three lowest one, double the highest one, and we'll go from there. <laughs> Submission type. If you click the little drop down right there, on paper is no longer a choice in this, at least for right now. It would be an online option, as in they're going to send it to you electronically. Ignore exter external tool. I'm, I'm ignoring something. So it's online. All right, now what are they going to give you? 99 out of 100 is going to be this one right here. I want a file. I want a Word document. I want a spreadsheet. I want a PDF. I want a picture, whatever it might be. If I click right there, this little critter jumps up. I can restrict. This is where you make your life easier if you so desire. If I click that box, it's going to say, what is allowed if it's only a Word document? D-O-C-X. Or if you like the old flavors of Word, D-O-C. Many faculty will put a Word document or they'll accept a PDF. So you can have multiple, you can have multiple choices here. Uh, in terms of what will, you will take. Mark. Is that um, just telling the students, okay, these are what's... They're going to see it. You're going to see it in just a minute. You're making... We're now working on the teacher side. You're defining the rules on the teacher side. I'm not telling the system, hey, these are the only file extensions that, are, that you can accept. That's exactly what's going to happen. If they submit something that's not acceptable, it will tell them when they try to submit it, this is not, will not be accepted. It, it, there, there's no secrets, as in, if you choose to complete this option, it's going to enforce that option. Okay. Questions? All right, very quickly. How about DOCX? Scroll down. I don't know how many, any of you involved in plagiarism want to run plagiarism, will be wanting to run plagiarism. We have a contract with a company called Turnitin. If you want to run a plagiarism, you change the none to Turnitin. I'm not going, I don't want to talk anymore about that if you don't mind. No, it's fairly safe, straightforward. But it will run a ch and check to see if your students are taking advantage of cut and paste from the land of Google. Do you have group assignments? You can set this option up right here and say this assignment is for group number one or group number two or whatever it is. Peer reviews we will ignore right now. Assigned to, by default, is everybody. By default, it goes to everybody. Down here, it's due. How about let's make it due next Tuesday. And notice by default, I'll have to show it in another place. It chooses the date and 11.59 p.m. for midnight. That way you don't get into arguments over which midnight are you talking about? Okay? It's, if you say it's due on, the, like I have selected here, March 17th, it's due until 11.59, it's due at 11.59 of that date or earlier. It will allow students to submit after that but it will note to you that this is late. And, you know, poor Mark here, he's working hard in my class. He submitted it on March 19th at 11.57 a.m. Canvas is not going to do anything about that. It's just saying, here's your information. Do I nail him or what for turning it in late? So Canvas does not, in this context, assign grades. It tells you that it's late. Some people say late's okay. Others say I don't want it, I'll give you a zero. Or you've earned a zero, excuse me. Do you see what, see what it says here? You understand, we're aware of that. All right, let's go back home if you would, please. 
up to the right of sample or whatever you called your module. Click the plus and make sure it says assignment. Now notice, there it sits. There it sits right there. So I click on it and add the item. So I've now added an assignment in there. Please click on student view. Then click on whatever you called your assignment. Click on the name. See, it tells the student right here everything they need to know. When it's due, how, what's it worth? You're going to upload a file, and here's the kind of documents I will take. All right? I'm not going to talk Blackboard. I'll stay away from Blackboard. In Canvas, you click this button. Please go ahead and click the Submit button. This comes up. The student would click Browse. They do I need to submit two files or whatever, and they click Submit. And by the way, if a student does it on Google, they can click right here and it'll send them over to the Google Drive and they grab the file off the Google Drive. That's how the students upload it. They simply click on it and go get it. Uh, let me browse some kind of junk I've got right quick. How about that? Open. Notice what happened. I tried to upload a JPEG and it yelled at me. So it will not accept, it will not accept something that's not in its wheelhouse. So that's how you do assignments. Putting files out there, doing assignments. Now please, get out of student view. Please click on grades. Please click on grades. If you're in your working class, you see all of your friends, so to speak. I'm using a dummy environment called, and it's called test student. You will notice there is a column that has that assignment. You create columns in the gradebook by creating assignments. I can't, it's not like Excel, and I jump into Excel and I start adding things to a column that's already there. That doesn't work that way. Canvas says, you're going to give a grade, you've got to name it. It's an assignment. So every assignment creates a column. I have the ability to grade, and I'll show you in a moment how to grade a paper. But I literally can click right there and put 57, didn't do too well. And so I got 57. Right now I'm sitting as a student at a 57% of my grade. Not good for the home folks. Let me take a breath. Questions about an assignment. I feel like I'm using about a 12 inch fire hose squirting you big time. Let me show you an example. I am now going to violate FERPA, but I'm among friends, right? No, I can't do this because it's being videoed. Nah. I apologize. I can't do it because of with the video. Here's what happens. When a student submits a document, I can click on it, and there it is right there in front of me. It's not paper. I'm going to grab Tammy's paper. It's not in this form. It's an electronic form. But if I like things that are paper, I can print every one of them out. I can print every one of them out. So you have the ability to look at what they submitted in an electronic form. It has an, uh, an option there where I can click. 
I don't know how many of you use Microsoft Word and you do annotations on the documents. You can do the same thing in Canvas. I can click on the second paragraph and say, this was an excellent paragraph. It is well written to the point. Or I can go to the third paragraph and say, this needs a little bit of work. It's a little weak here. So I can put comments in context. Over to the right, I can enter the grade. This paper has a grade of 87. Submit and it automatically puts that number in the grade book for me. I don't have to enter the number but once. It doesn't require you to be repetitive in that I enter it here and go over and enter it here. No. So you have the ability to grade a paper, there it is, enter the grade, and it puts it in the grade book. If you're a student, if you are a student, guess what they click on to look for grades? Grades. That's my toughest question, Tim. They click on grades. It shows them all of their grades in the grade book. Please understand, privacy and security is not an issue, except if I come over here and peek over Mark's shoulder and look at his grades while he's looking at it and say, ha ha, I made better than you did. There is not a, there, no student gets to see anybody else's grades, so it's strictly, I mean, it's, it's a product that protects it meets all the FERPA requirements and everything. Big picture, here's what I, as you look to your future, here's, here's, here's what I would, is one of my last big points. You know, I, I'm not a good one to tell you because I'm sort of picked on as the person that knows it all in Canvas. But the courses I've been teaching that, that are appropriate to do in Canvas, I have everything in Canvas. I have every assignment. I, I, I taught a, a, a sophomore level class that had about 40 something assignments. I have everything submitted in Canvas. So if a student comes to me and says, I turned that document in. You say, I didn't. How do you argue with Canvas? Either you submitted it or you didn't. So I keep everything in Canvas because I don't have any arguments with people in this context that Hey, let's look at your document. Here it is. If somebody comes back in the future and questions a great, let's get it out. There it is. So let's look at it. Let's walk through it. Where politely I say, I've been in some faculty members' offices that finding something would be a challenge. Okay? And that's then we all deal differently. I please understand. I use that for example, sometimes good or bad. But I have it all right there. We don't have any don't have any issues as in here it is it's all electronic now I know for some of you that's very foreign in a way I'm just trying to encourage you cheer you on push you along or pull you or bribe you one of the one of those options but canvas allows me to do things I believe much more efficiently and much better organized once you get over that initial curve Jerry Are all students here taught how to use there's not really a teaching of the students. The people that are on the short end of the stick are some of the graduate students that you all might have that have not been to school in several years and they are by themselves. They don't have the community that you would have as undergraduates. That's the people that need somewhat of a point in the direction. If you set your course up with the right names your naming scheme makes sense if those students that you have can't follow through that you know i might say are they quality college material in a way again the biggest as i've said before the biggest challenge we have in supporting student questions is where do i find such and such in such and such as course i can't find what they said it was to be called and that's why i said a while ago about your terminology Students are comfortable at clicking on modules and looking down and says, oh, we're in week six. There's module week six. Here's all the things I've got to do to make Dr. Gaw a happy guy. So there's, we've not really, there's been offers. When we first started Canvas, we contacted Harding and said, how did you train your students? And they said, we had a bunch of people ready to train the students and nobody showed up, basically. 
So that's why we didn't make a big effort uh, except look at specific pockets. I was just thinking that student you didn't get an assignment from maybe forgot to click submit or something, you know. They well, didn't, just didn't finish the process. I did, well, here's the thing that, that they, they realized real quick. When, it, when you click submit, which I apologize for not demonstrating with a correct document, it gives them again the warm fuzzy back that says document gall was submitted at 148 and 17 seconds on Friday, March, whatever. I mean, computers tell you more than you want to know. It gives reinforcement. If a student comes into you and says, Canvas is broken, it would not take any of my work. They are making an assumption you're clueless. Bluntly, bluntly. We have students, please understand, we have students that will try to convince you that Canvas is broken. We started Canvas two years ago this month. It's up functional time is 99.999% of the time. It has been down twice since we've been using it for minutes, not hours, for minutes in two years. Now, almost two o'clock. Open questions, anything. I've, I've just started. What I would like, I'm sorry, Tim, I ran my mouth off and should have kept it quiet for a minute. Think about what you would like to put out there for your students. I physically will be in the CTL, not this coming week. I'm enjoying my spring break. Please understand that, and I hope you are too. From 8 o'clock that Monday through the following Friday afternoon, come in. If you have what you want to put out there on Canvas, I will point you in the right direction and make you a super Canvas user in a matter of a few minutes. I'll be glad to help you. I just got to, I've got to get you into the rhythm. Tim. Is there an instruction manual yes. online or else? Yes. Yes. If you click courses, all courses, up at the top, it's called Browse More Courses. These two right here assume that you can spell Canvas and that's all. Really, it's, 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 it tells you a lot of stuff. Canvas 101 and learn to teach in Canvas. These other things that we have put out here are things, this is an area we're using to provide support materials. We just went to a new grade book. Now for you, you didn't know the old grade book, so it's the grade book. Uh, but the Canvas changed the grade book last year. So that really doesn't serve any purpose. Well, it could. Uh, but these are the two. And you can look through for, here's the best help. One of the greatest things that happened for us when we left Blackboard and went to Canvas is the external support resources. Canvas has a tremendous corporate support set of information that call the community. But there are a tremendous number of people out there that are using Canvas that want to help other folks. If you go to Google and type Canvas, followed by your question, I promise you, you'll get 15 good responses from various people. There is a tremendous, again, I'm glad to help you, but if you will go into Google or whatever search engine you use and simply put Canvas, followed by your question, it will bring up things from corporate Canvas and it brings up things from other people. Now, please be aware, Canvas is a K through university tool so if you get something talking about elementary students, then you realize that that's not your flavor. The best thing I'll say about Canvas is they have never lost a customer. They have never had a customer leave them and go to another product. Now, if the school went out of business, that's another story. Uh, but they've never lost a corporate, as a corporate, any customers. Thank you. Please let me know how I can help you. Thank you.